Dave Ramsey and Chris Hogan uploaded a video the other day, this video right here, where they were talking about oil prices going negative. And both of them made some really disparaging and flat out disingenuous remarks about gold. And people like Dave Ramsey and Chris Hogan, they represent that scene in the Titanic where the ship is sinking and you have the gentleman on the ship playing the music as the ship goes down. Well, that's Chris Hogan and Dave Ramsey right now. And the lifeboats are alternative assets like gold and silver and cryptocurrencies. And they're telling their 1.65 million subscribers, no, don't pay attention to those life rafts. Rome is burning. And either Dave Ramsey is willfully ignorant or he has a vested interest in this corrupt, flat out, immoral system that we're living in. Every fiat currency in the history of man has eventually went to zero. And when societies reset, they always go back to a gold standard. Now, before I get into the information in my presentation, I'm going to play a quick clip from this video. If you want to watch the video in its entirety, a link to that will be in the description below. So let's listen to what they have to say, and then I'll get to the information. It's like oil around the stock market. Uh, this is why we tell you not to buy gold. Okay, the the demand for it drives the price, and the, not the actual oil doesn't actually create money. Mm -hmm. The barrel of oil doesn't. It eventually does once it turns into gasoline and or, or an oil refined product of some kind. But the barrel of oil is traded based on supply and demand. Gold is traded based on supply and demand, and there's a higher demand when people are greedy or afraid for gold, and that's the only thing that drives gold prices versus a share of Dell or a share of McDonald's stock or a share of Home Depot stock or a, a rental property actually creates money. Mm-hmm. They actually create money. They're not a fixed item. But, and so diamonds are a, gemstones are a fixed item. A supply shortage of those drives, the rarity of them drives right. the price up. Yeah. Well, I can remember in 07 through 09, the whole talk of gold. Okay, that, that became, you know, people were, you know, I need to buy gold, I need to buy gold. I'm thinking, no, you don't. That's 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 a the value is is man given. There you go. You know, it's not math. It's not math. You could not roll into a grocery store with a gold nugget and get anything. Mm -mm. No. And so, Except you know, it's arrested. Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting. Boy, I tell you, those two, they are smug and they are flat out disingenuous. Just listen to that last statement that he made, how asinine and stupid that is. He's telling you that you can't roll into a grocery store with a gold nugget. First of all, you have to compare gold to other monetary assets, such as the dollar, to fiat currencies. To even compare gold to the stock market is stupid. Stocks are designed to earn profits. Gold is meant to be a unit of account a medium of exchange, and a store of value. Guess what would happen if I rolled into my grocery store with the yen or the British pound or the euro? I live here in America. My grocery store would not accept that because that's not the local currency. Guess what I would have to do if I had an alternative currency? I would have to exchange it. That's why they have a currency exchange. I wouldn't have to exchange it for my local currency. Well, guess what you can do with gold? You can do the same exact thing. You can take your gold nugget and you can convert it into US dollars and go and buy your groceries. That makes absolutely no sense. That's, com that's not an apples to apples comparison when you're comparing gold, which is money, to stocks. You should be comparing the value of gold to the fiat currency in which you're getting paid from your cash flowing real estate or your dividends. You should be valuing your stocks and gold to see if you're really building wealth or if you're losing wealth. Because many of you don't understand inflation is a hidden tax that you can't see. It's something that's slow over time. And here's a fact. 
The dollar since 1913 has lost over 90 percent of its purchasing power. And don't worry, we're going to get to the charts and the graphs and the information. And I know some of you are going to say, oh, well, I wasn't alive in 1913, so that doesn't matter. Well, we can go to 1971 when we closed the gold window. And the dollar has lost 80 percent of its purchasing power since then. See, the reason why gold is money is it's something known as the stock to flow ratio. And I agree with Dave Ramsey. We should be looking at the supply and demand. The reason why soft commodities like oil could never be money is because it's easy to produce more of it to flood the market with supply. It's not easy to flood the market with gold or silver. Right now, what you're looking at is the stock to flow ratio. Where you are diver dividing the current stock by the flow that's coming out of the ground. The stock is everything that's above ground. There's currently 185,000 tons of gold above the ground. And then you have 3,000 new tons, that's the flow, that they're pulling out of the ground. So if you divide that, you get a ratio of 62, which is equivalent to 62 years. In order for you, at current production of 3,000 tons on an annual basis, to get an equivalent amount of gold out of the ground to equal what's above the ground, it would take you 62 years of production. Now, I know what some of you smart people are going to say. Well, if we just increase production, what does that do? Well, you just slash it from 62 to 31. That's hard money. It has a high stock to flow ratio. That's why gold was always used as money because you cannot just print it out of thin air. It doesn't rot. It doesn't erode. It doesn't spoil. Right. Guess what? You can drop gold in the ocean. To the bottom of the floor and a thousand years later, you can go pull that gold from out of that ship, out of that shipwreck, and it will still have its same properties. They call it God's money for a reason. Now, let's talk about supply and demand. Your government just printed and guaranteed in loans ten point seven trillion dollars in two weeks. Six point two trillion between the CARES Act and the stimulus and the bailout for small and medium sized businesses. And then the Fed just did another four and a half trillion. That's just one program. That's just one bailout. That's just one country. Now think about all of the other countries, Australia, Russia, Germany, they're doing bailouts. They're doing stimulus. So the supply and demand that we need to be comparing is the supply and demand for gold versus the supply and demand for fiat currencies. They're increasing the money supply in fiat currencies. So it's not just about fear. Gold is making all-time highs. I mean, gold is making yearly highs for the year. And he's telling you that gold, you, you shouldn't be paying attention to gold. It's only about fear-based, really? Or is it about inflation? Is it about supply and demand that the world is being flooded with fiat currencies and dollars? That's what it's about. Look at the market cap of gold. The total market cap of gold is nine trillion, less than $9 trillion. I just told you that your U.S. government just did $10.7 trillion. Now, Dave Ramsey has 1.65 million subscribers. What do you think is going to happen when they finally wake up and they want to go out here and start buying gold? What do you think that that's going to do to the price of gold? That's going to send gold skyrocketing because most people don't own gold. And if they do, they own the paper version. Well, what's the problem with the paper version? It can be manipulated like the stock market through rehypothecation, where these companies are selling paper gold. They're selling more paper gold than they actually have physical gold. And they're doing that over and over and over again. The physical market is where you need to be. This is why you need to be paying attention. Now, let's talk about purchasing power, because I love to show this picture. And some of for those of you who have been following me for a while, you've seen this information before. But understand, Dave Ramsey has one point six five million people and they don't see the need to own gold. Look at this graphic. Since the Federal Reserve Act was passed in 1913, the dollar has lost 90 percent of its purchasing power, 90 percent of it. 
Every year through inflation, you lose 3% of the value of your money as far as purchasing power. Now, I know some of you are going to say, oh, well, you know, I wasn't alive in 1913. Well, let's look at a more, you know, recent year, 1971. Why 1971? Because that was when we officially closed the gold window. And we completely removed ourselves from a gold standard. Well, if you took $35 and you sat it in a bank account, it would still be $35, right? No interest bearing CDs, nothing like that. Just simply saving money. Because Dave Ramsey's all about saving money and being financially responsible. Well, here in 2020, that $35 has the purchasing power of $5.26. It's still $35, but what it can buy, it only can buy $5.26 worth of goods. That means your money is losing value. What did I say to you before? Gold does three things. It stores value. It is a unit of account. And it is a medium of exchange. And it should only be compared to other monetary goods, such as fiat currencies. If you want to compare stocks, you compare gold stocks like Newmont Mining to IBM or to Apple. It's disingenuous to compare gold. You should be valuing your portfolio in gold to see if you're actually building wealth or you're getting paid in money that's losing value. Now, if you took that same $35, and I picked 35 because in 1971, you could buy one ounce of gold for $35. Well, if we go here to the chart and we look at this chart and you took $35 and you parked it in gold, and you held it from 1971, it's worth $1,716 today, right now. Which one increased in value, maintained its value? What did I say money is supposed to do? Maintain purchasing power. Which one was more successful? The obvious answer is gold. That's the whole purpose of money. Remember, you are trading your most valuable asset, which is time. I would say time is more valuable than gold and silver. And you're getting paid in a currency that's losing on average 3% a year. And that's if you believe the government CPI data, which I don't believe. Shouldn't you be getting paid in something that will appreciate in value or at least maintain its value? Look at this. I picked this again, like I said, $35 because that's how much you could buy an ounce of gold for in 71. To buy the same goods and services in 1971, right? It took $35. Today, it would take $223 to buy those same goods and services. Think about that. Think about that for a second. Now ask yourself a more important question. Are your wages increasing with inflation? See, inflation isn't bad if your wages are increasing with inflation. But most of the monetary expansion that we get is through credit creation and debt creation. So we go through these boom and bust cycles where when the economy is booming, it's really only booming because you're going into debt. And then when we get to deflation, like everyone talks about the deflation, the problem is you lose your job when the deflation happens, like right now. So you can't benefit from the deflation. Here's another article. And don't worry, all of these articles and data points and charts and stuff will be linked in the description below and in the comment section, because I believe in you going and doing your own due diligence. It says for most U.S. workers, real wages have barely budged in decades. Because you have to measure it adjusted for inflation. And I highlighted a few paragraphs in here. It says, despite the strong labor market, wage growth has lagged economists' expectations. In fact, despite some ups and downs over the past several decades, today's real average wage 
This is the wage after accounting for inflation has about the same purchasing power it did 40 years ago. And what wage gains there have been have mostly flowed to the highest paid tier of workers. Think about that for a second. Your salary, your wages today has the same purchasing power from back in the 70s. After adjusting for inflation, however, today's average hourly wage has just about the same purchasing power it did in 1978, following a long slide in the 1980s, in the early 1990s, and bumpy inconsistent growth since then. In fact, in real terms, average hourly earnings peaked more than 45 years ago. The $4.03 an hour rate recorded in January 1973 had the same purchasing power that $23.68 would today. A similar measure, the usual weekly earnings of employed full-time wage and salary workers tells much the same story, albeit over a shorter time period. In seasonally adjusted current dollars, median usual weekly earnings rose from $232 in the first quarter of 1979 when the data series began to $879 in the second quarter of this year, which might sound like a lot, but in real inflation adjusted terms, the median has barely budged over that period. That $232 in 1979 had the same purchasing power as $840 in today's dollars. Why? Because of what Dave Ramsey said, supply and demand. We are flooding the world with dollars. Literally flooding the world with dollars. I just told you, between the stimulus and the Fed, in two weeks, they were able to print and guarantee loans to the tune of $10.7 trillion. Gold is hard money. It would take 62 years of current production to get the equivalent amount of gold from out of the ground that's above ground. That's hard money. That's real money. That's an asset that you want to get paid in. So you can't compare gold to any other commodity because it's not easy to produce it like every other commodity. Your Federal Reserve Chairman, Jerome Powell, is telling you inflation is low, but everything around you is going up. Education has risen eight times faster than wages. Housing. Everywhere you look, Everything costs more money, but your wages aren't increasing. Your purchasing power is going down. If you save money, on average, you're losing 3% every year. As you can see, 4%, 3%, 6%. And this is the government CPI data. This is not me giving you some conspiracy theory. No, this is me telling you what's factual. So why do you want to own gold? Because gold is going to maintain its value and in increasing purchasing power. And if you need to convert it into euros, you just sell it and convert it to euro. You sell it and convert it to U.S. dollars. That's what you do. I'll show you another graphic so you can get the picture. This is a menu from McDonald's back in the 70s. When your money actually had value. Quarter pounder. You can get it for 70 cents. A filet of fish for 48 cents. A cheeseburger for 33 cents, a hamburger for 28 cents. What's changed between the 70s and in 2020? Our money isn't backed by gold. Our money isn't backed by anything that's tangible. It's a bunch of ones and zeros on a computer server. Don't believe me? Let's listen to what good old Ben Bernanke has to say. See, they're not even hiding this from you anymore, they're putting it right in your face. So listen to this clip right now, and we'll, I'll come right back. Is that tax money? The Fed's balance sheet. Is that tax money that the Fed is spending? It's not tax money. The banks have um, accounts with the Fed much the same way that you have an account in a commercial bank. So to lend to a bank, we simply use the computer to mark up the uh, size of the account that they have with the Fed. So it's much more akin 
uh, although not exactly the same, but it's much more akin to printing money than it is to borrowing. You've been printing money. Well, effectively, and we need to do that because our economy is very weak and inflation is very low. When the economy begins to recover, that'll be the time that we need to unwind those programs uh, raise interest rates, reduce the money supply, and make sure that we have a recovery that does not involve inflation. He's not kidding about printing money. The Fed issues U.S. currency. That's why it says Federal Reserve Note on all the bills in your wallet. This is the Bureau of Engraving and Printing, just its balance. They don't even hide it from you anymore. They're not even hiding it anymore. They're putting it right here in plain sight for the world to see. Now remember, he said, this was back in 2008. He said that they were going to unwind their balance sheet and they were going to raise interest rates. And here we are now, we're sitting here today and interest rates are at 0%. The Fed's balance sheet is sitting at $6 trillion. Now, Dave Ramsey's talking to you about supply and demand. That is entails that we've increased the supply of dollars and credit creation and debt in the system. Guys, you cannot increase the gold supply this way. That's why it's money, because it's hard money. It takes equipment, machinery, and mining exploration to find it. So it's not just about fear, because gold was going up last year. And the year before that, think about it. Gold's been increasing. If you look at the chart, right? I'm not making this up. Gold has been increasing and increasing since February, January of March of 2019. There was no pandemic back then, but yet gold was still going up. Oh, I know why gold was increasing. Because the Fed was going into the repo market to the tune of 50 to $100 billion on a daily basis, pumping up the stock market, keeping interest rates low, and the rest of the world sees that and says, this is unsustainable. And people are wanting to get away from the dollar, especially Russia and China. See, if you listen to Warren Buffett, he tells you gold is just the rock. It doesn't do anything. It's not supposed to do anything. Money, your money should not do anything but be money. That's all it should do. It should be a store of value, a unit of account, and a medium of exchange. That's what gold should be able to do. Nothing more, nothing less. China's gold buying spree tops 100 tons during the trade war. If gold had no value, why are countries buying it by the ton? Let's look at this real quick. And this is from the World Gold Council. It says... The U.S. has 8,134 tons. Mind you, they haven't audited the reserve, so we don't know if this is true. Germany has 3,000 tons. China has 1,937. And Russia has 2,219. I don't believe the U.S. has their gold on hand. Because of rehypothecation. I told you, many of these ETFs and these gold trading vehicles... They don't have the physical gold. And as I said before, you're dealing with a $9 trillion market. Most people don't own gold, the physical asset. When people wake up and they come for that physical asset, you have to think about the trillions of dollars that's going to come into this market. The name of the game is to buy low and sell high. You want to buy assets before the rest of the world comes in. And I keep telling you guys, you get the deflation before the inflation, but the deflation isn't the deflation in prices, it's in asset prices. And then the Fed comes to the rescue through quantitative easing, through TARP, through TAUF, and they start buying up assets, because Ben Bernanke said in the clip I just played for you, that they're going to unwind their balance sheet. Well, this is in 2009. Does it look like the balance sheet has been unwound in any way? Or does it look like the balance sheet is continuing to increase? Does it look like the supply of dollars is continuing to increase? Does it look like the credit creation and the debt in the system is continuing to increase? Look at the debt clock. Is it going down or is it going up by the second? $24 trillion. 
So I agree with Dave Ramsey. Supply and demand definitely sets markets. I agree 100%. I don't disagree at all. But when you have the Fed coming out, this is Neil Kashkari. This is what he has to say. Play his clip. You don't need to. You're 18. ATM is safe. Your bank, you don't need to. Your ATM is safe. Your banks are safe. There's enough cash in the financial system. And there is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. We will do whatever we need to do to make sure that there's enough cash in the banking system. You don't need to. Your ATM is safe. Your banks are safe. There's enough cash in the financial system. And there is an infinite amount of cash at the Federal Reserve. We will do whatever we need to do to make sure that there's enough cash in the banking system. You He's telling you. They're going to do whatever they have to do, which is print money. It's in your face now. So going back to what I said at the beginning of this video, Dave Ramsey and Chris Hogan, they represent the guys that was on the Titanic playing the music as the ship is sinking. The lifeboat is alternative assets like cryptocurrencies, like precious metals, or even real estate for that matter, because people are always going to need a place to live. But you should be valuing your assets in alternative currencies and I wouldn't call gold a currency, I would call it money. And versus fiat currencies like the dollar, like the yen, and like the euro is what you should be doing. Because if you start looking at that, the data is clear. Which one's the better form of money? If you look at the stock to flow ratio, it's a reason why gold has always been money. Because you can't produce more of it. It's not easy to find it. That's why they call it God's money. It would take you 62 years of current production to get the equivalent amount, amount from out of the ground. Oil, look how easy it is to produce it. It's not hard to produce oil. That's why it can't be used as money. And to say that fear is driving a gold trade, when gold started its move back in October of 2018, this is not true. And then gold broke this sideways market back here in July of 2019. There was no pandemic back in 2019. So why was gold prices going up then? Because the rest of the world is looking to get away from the dollar. Because they can see that the dollar is being devalued. That it can be printed out of thin air. It's just a bunch of ones and zeros on a server. And to listen to Chris Hogan make that asinine statement that you can't walk into a grocery store with a gold nugget. I can't walk into the grocery store with the euro either. Or the yen. I live here in America. I would have to convert it. That's the power of having an alternative asset. Gold isn't an investment. It's a store of value. It is a unit of account and a median of exchange. That's what it's for. Nothing more, nothing less. And anyone telling you that you should not own gold, that you should not own silver, while it's about to make all-time highs, why it's at yearly highs today. Walk away. Turn them off. We all misspeak from time to time. You can't get it wrong for this long and be taken serious in gold investing. When it comes to personal finance, retirement, Dave Ramsey's very good at that. I will not sit up here and uh, discredit him and say that he doesn't know his stuff, but he represents an old system an antiquated system, a corrupt system, a fraudulent system. And the world is moving away from that system. Now, we don't know how long this may be. It may take another five years. Who knows how long the system can go? But the more money they print, the more supply of dollars they put, the more fiat currency they pump into the system, hard assets like gold and silver are going to perform well. And then you have the wild card like Bitcoin. So I hope that you got some value from this video. I hope that you can see through the information I provided to you that Dave Ramsey is being disingenuous because he has a vested interest in the old system. And we are witnessing a changing of the guard. So do me a favor and please like this video, share this video, subscribe and hit the notification bell. 
And please make sure that you join my mailing list and drop a comment below and tell me what do you think? Do you think I'm an idiot? Do you think I have no business questioning Dave? Or do you think that I'm on the money?